Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Bright Memory Infinite Gold Edition on the Nintendo Switch, a first person shooter promising some seriously impressive visuals, but can it deliver and will that gameplay match that same quality? Well that's what I'm here to find out, so hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily, and let's get started. The story then is quite honestly nonsense, it has very little structure and piecing it together from what the game gives you is near to impossible. Opening the game we are chilling at home and then there is a storm being broadcast on TV. There's also a fireworks show scheduled that we need to know about for some reason. Next thing we know the SRO is calling our agency and they want us to go investigate. I have absolutely no idea what the SRO is at this point. On the way though, we now find ourselves sitting in some sort of futuristic ship of sorts. We have to jump to light speed and then all of a sudden, there's a black hole and an evil force that it seems behind this weather or attack or whatever it may be. Not really sure, but it's time to go to war. Before you know it, some sort of alien race is here to party as well. The best explanation, the eShop, it's 2036, is a strange occurrence, I presume the weather and the black hole, it seems. Scientists though, they can't explain it, so now the Supernatural Science Research Organization, which is apparently SRO, send you to investigate. It's uncovered, it's the history of two worlds coming together. Didn't really get that in game, but it has some decently action-packed cutscenes. Gameplay then and Bright Memory is a first person shooter which then blends in a sword based combat as well to great effect. Influences in these moments include Devil May Cry as you can fling enemies into the air. My approach was typically beat down on enemies with gunfire before moving in close and hacking away. The gun selection here though it's decent, shotguns, machine guns, pistols, each feel unique and have a satisfying kick to their fire rate. Additionally we get alternate fire modes as well which adds a layer of strategy on occasion, mainly in some unique boss encounters where our foes become essentially bullet sponges until you find that effective ammo type. Then the katana and this was my favourite part of the experience as it's so fast and fluid and the animation of our foes are particularly brutal as limbs fly all over the place. The katana it also acts as a defensive measure as well in the sense you can block both melee attacks and even deflect bullets back towards your enemies. You'll even get insta kills as should you approach a foe from behind. The most satisfying move on offer though with the katana, as I said, the ability to fling someone into the air and hack them down. That's where the devil and may cry love is absolutely shining through. The controls, they don't stop there either for attacks. We also get what is exo arm skills, that's our armor suit. It's basically a hidden ability. We start with what is a tractor beam that can pull and push enemies from a distance, but it can afford to things like a rocket punch. It's a decent array of attacks, so when that armor kind of set up, it definitely gives it a crisis feel. We even get a skill tree of upgrades. To do this, we need to collect what are essentially relics, and these will then be converted. You can upgrade the arm, your light blade, and your weapon with new abilities. This includes everything from think evolved attacks to more effective grenades that we do get later into the game. Controls wise then it's wrapped up with movement and it's providing a bit more freedom than most in the genre. This isn't just the standard move, duck and jump. Yes it features those but we can also double jump, we can wall run and we can dash to avoid incoming attacks. Alongside this then as well we'll get button prompts on screen to access manoeuvres such as grapple hooks. Overall, and no complaints on the controls, they are entertaining, you can evolve them quickly so there's nearly something new always to see, and then enemies, they add for a decent amount of variety, though it typically leans into overwhelming you instead of utilising smart AI, so let's say they could flank you. You are here though to be a badass, and that's definitely the feeling it delivers. Problems for gameplay, well first there's a horribly boring stealth section in the middle, it relies on you basically sneaking with a blade in hand and if spotted it's nearly always instant death, it drags on and while I know the story makes little to no sense it was really annoying to me that I was killing all these enemies with guns in hand but I wouldn't pick one up, there was no explanation, it made it feel forced into the loop to kind of you know break down the pacing. 
Then there's a few occasions where almost quick time events determine your fate, whether it's the opening of the game as you fly into attack, or whether it's small, almost automated sequences. There's one where the hurricane or something's kind of behind you on your tail. Also, the game has some execution animations, which are nice the first time, but they take control away, and it's not quite as satisfying as seeing slow motion kick in on screen, signifying your last enemy has fallen. Finally, the runtime. This was originally made by a single developer. It's impressive to behold, honestly, mainly from a visual standpoint, but the mechanics are sound as well. The problem, the entire experience, it can be wrapped up in 80 minutes, and there's little reason to head back unless you want to try out one of the five difficulty settings on offer. It's particularly annoying then that a good 15 or so minutes of this runtime, it was wasted on that stealth section. I did have fun personally, just for many, I'm not sure it's going to be enough to justify the price point of $20 or your regional equivalent. If you knew the game though and were hoping for more content given the gold edition name here, that's nothing more than cosmetics for the weapons and our lead, and they keep things extra classy here with mostly bikinis, or at a minimum something skin tight. To close out gameplay on a positive though, look performance wise great work, it's not quite locked but it sits for the majority at a solid 30 frames per second and I rarely noticed any drops at all, it ran smoothly throughout, the only thing I will say when slow motion kicks in for a final blow, there's a stutter that seems to be a design choice in animation but it definitely looks a little weird. Also then we do see the inclusion here of field a few options which is always nice for a console release, a slew of HUD options, the subtitle sizing options great for handheld players out there, and finally motion controls, these can be on permanently, they can of course be turned off, or you can use them just when zoomed in. It also then has a sensitivity slider so you can find that perfect setting for you. Overall for gameplay, look this is a game I describe as a shot of adrenaline, it's fast paced, it's fist scroller, the gunplay is heavy as is the katana, but it is over before you know it, and it packs a few moments that definitely lower the overall experience. Graphically then, I feel that that's what everyone was so curious about with this, and for the most part, it's done a great job, it's maintained the frame rate, kept this world and environment intact, the locations have near constant weather effects, and the gunplay and katana swinging, it looks really good when it's all kind of coming together. Enemy design, it can get a little repetitive, but you'll basically see futuristic army forces and then almost think alien warriors, but of the fantasy variety. The game also packs V-Sync options and motion blur to choose from. The preset here is light motion blur, V-Sync off, and that's what I stuck with personally, as when I did switch it up, it made very little noticeable difference. The world then it can be repetitive given the fact it really is just one location you're working through and then some of the texture work on closer inspection you will notice that it's quite a bit lower quality. Also enemies they are often pixelated on movement which seems to be a drawback of the motion blur but you cannot remove it. My guess it's kind of part of the compromise to get this up and running natively without resorting to a cloud build. Honestly though it's great work, I'm impressed, I'd love to see more games live up to the standards. Audio finally, it's pretty generic stuff honestly, the music is action packed, high intensity, you will however forget it instantly, and the guns and the swords sound heavy and that's what you want. There is voice acting then as well, that's for kind of radio comms as well as small cutscenes in the world, that also includes enemies during battle. Overall for audio it does a decent job, it kind of rounds out the package, but it's definitely nothing special. So the final verdict and bright memory, there's no question, this is an impressive port. That said, I do fear people will get distracted by the pretty visuals and go about giving this one 10 out of 10s and the like because we've somehow now grown accustomed to performance issues and heavily downgraded visuals on the system. But gameplay is still so important and that's where for me bright memory can't quite maintain, you know, that same quality. Sure, the gunplay and katana are great stuff, but it is a somewhat repetitive world you're battling through. The brief quick time like offense frustrating, and for some reason then, they chose an annoyingly slow stealth section to pad the middle of the game, and it was already a short runtime to begin with. I'd rather have the intensity non-stop beginning to end. Throw that in then with a story that makes little to no sense, 
And for me, it's definitely a case of it's more style over substance, if anything. I still had fun though, I want to make that clear, I'm not calling the game bad, it's just far from exceptional, and no doubt as well, the runtime, an hour and a half, it will put many off. With all of that in mind today, a good 7 out of 10 from me, hopefully though this leads to a sequel, because you have a great little shower for what could be an excellent experience, and remember to factor in, this was made by one person, and that is seriously impressive. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone. <laughs>